Joining me now, a member of the January 6th committee, Congressman Pete Aguilar of California. Uh, Congressman, uh, why do you want to talk to Jim Jordan? Well, as the letter from Chairman Thompson indicated, we want we feel that the information that he has uh, in his possession uh, can shed some light on exactly what happened and what transpired on January 5th and January 6th. That's the basis of it. And for someone who publicly said that he has nothing to hide, it seems fairly clear. Uh, to any American watching, uh, that someone who is dedic truly dedicated to democracy and our institutions uh, and of Congress should be willing to come forward and have a conversation uh, with his colleagues about what he knows. Yeah, Scott Perry has already said that he won't he won't cooperate with this. Um, Jordan was asked about this today uh, on on Fox, and I want to play you what he had to say and get your get your response. What will your reaction be? Will it be the same as Mark Meadows, uh, take a walk, or would you sit down and, and speak to them? I mean, we just got the letter today, Brian. We're going to review the letter, but, but I got to be honest with you. I got real concerns about any committee that will take a document and alter it and present it to the American people, completely mislead the American people like they did last week. I think that's a reference into the into the text that he sent to Mark Meadows because it didn't have, like, the full citation and it wasn't noted that it was a forwarded text. I don't know. He seems to be uh, uh, upset about that. W what do you make of his reaction? Uh, quite, quite the stretch for, uh, for missing a, uh, a period uh, at the end of a sentence. So, uh, that's that's uh, it's unfortunate. But look, I mean, that's what we've seen from from some of these individuals who are close to the former president uh, is they're going to look at every way to uh, delay and, and avoid and evade uh, the committee's work. And that's exactly why uh, someone like um, uh, Mr. Jordan isn't fit to, to serve um, in this body uh, with us uh, in this investigation. And so uh, it's important. Look, we're going to try to get our work. We're going to appeal to him as a colleague to come before us, truly, if he has nothing to hide. Uh, and from that interview that you played before, he clearly uh, there he knows more. And he was talking about, well, going back and checking, but he didn't say that um, because he knows that there's ways to go back and check how many conversations were had. So uh, we're going to ask uh, for his, uh, for, we're going to appeal to him as a, as a colleague, um, but uh, and we'll await his formal response to us. I mean, part of what we're, what we're seeing here unfold between Scott Perry, uh, I think yesterday and Jim Jordan today is that, you know, it's just a matter of public record, independent of it's a matter of public record that a number of members of Congress in the House Republican Caucus actively coordinated with the White House on a strategy to prevent uh, the rightful seating of the person that won the election, Joe Biden, and to keep the person who lost the election as president over the will of the American people. That That's just a fact that we all know it's a matter of public record. And, I, and there's no way to do an investigation of January 6th that's not going to start to brush up a bunch against a bunch of your colleagues. Well, and we've been very clear that we're going to follow every lead uh, wherever it goes. That's why as early as August, uh, the, the chairman uh, sent letters uh, for preservation letters to telecom companies uh, that included uh, people close to the president and included uh, members of Congress. So we, we pu publicly noticed that and, and let people know that. Um, but because we wanted folks to know that we weren't going to be deterred uh, by this. And so uh, nothing so far has, has surprised us. Uh, we'll continue to, to work through the game plan, but clearly uh, the premise uh, still holds uh, that some of these individuals were coordinating with the White House on a pressure campaign uh, to overturn uh, the election. And so it, we're appealing to our colleagues here uh, to shed some light on that. In the absence of cooperation, can you envision a situation in which uh, Jordan and or Scott Perry would be subpoenaed? Well, we're not there yet, but uh, we do have other tools. Uh, we haven't been uh, shy about using those tools uh, in other cases. And so uh, we're going to await the response from uh, from our colleague here. And then uh, the, the chair will, will huddle with the committee uh, and uh, we'll chart a path forward. Uh, but it's also important to note that over 300 people have been interviewed um, some that we noticed publicly, uh, I think over 40 that, that we noticed publicly, many conversations uh, are happening uh, quietly. And we would prefer that uh, to gather information 
uh, to, to review and to continue to chase these investigative leads, um, we're going to continue to do that work, um, you know, out of the, the public realm, uh, and we're going we're gonna to have success doing that. But we're not going to be con- deterred uh, for investigating the January 6th uh, attack on the Capitol. Uh, our, our mission and our focus uh, is to get to the truth, and uh, Chairman Thompson has been charting a path to get us there. All right, Congressman Pete Aguilar, thank you very much. 